right, time to do some yoga. Settle into your seat. Start to check in. What is today like? What does it feel like right now? Tonight's class will be about surrender. Surrendering to this moment. Letting go. And it's not to say we're giving up or giving in. We're simply allowing and accepting here before us. It's kind of like a tuning in, and a gentle watching. When anything comes up, we just relate to it with a gentle heart. like taking care of a newborn baby or a really good friend. When we peel back the layers of ourself, we go deeper and deeper and deeper and we find our true nature just this soft, open heart. The heart has no condition, no boundaries. It's infinite, spacious, and full of love. though we may try to protect that space and cover it up and conceal it and make sure it's okay. At this moment in time, we are safe. So perhaps we can investigate a little bit and touch those tender spots. Surrender to our emotions and give them space to express themselves. so that they may pass through and we can breathe in the next moment. Fresh, available. Let's take one big breath together, inhale. Exhale, let everything go. Now from this space of open awareness, let's start with a bow. Cool, so we will do our first pose now, which will be kind of like a butterfly, but we'll go into some side stretches with it. So take butterfly feet, Find your sits bones, find your legs on the ground, and then come forward, let your hands drop in front of you slightly. We're not straining, don't apply too much pressure. Just feel a nice, gentle forward fold. And then walk your hands over to the right. And you can start to lean forward over that right leg you feel like it, you can take your left hand and place it on top of your right hand. Feeling that outer stretch on the left side of the body, the ribs opening up. And here we find another opportunity to surrender. To 
come out of our shell, to let go any of the producing, anything that makes us feel like we're not good enough right now. You can just let that go off to the side. Right now is enough. Choosing peace is enough. And you can start to walk your hands back through center, staying kind of low to the ground. And then walk your hands right over to the left. This time, the left hand can come on top of the right hand. Or sorry, the right hand can come on top of the left, excuse me. And you feel that opening on the right side of the body. Letting go any extra tension that might be held in the face. We're like chemists or alchemists. We're transforming what is rigid, what is metal into fluid into liquid, creating space out of what is rigid. Nothing is fixed. We can relax. Letting go a little bit more. It's not easy, but it's also really simple. It's a simplicity. It's not forced. There's just an allowing of this moment right now. your hands back to center, folding forward just for a moment, let the head and neck go, then walk yourself back up, bring your legs out straight, let's keep them wide, and if you have some tightness in your lower back, maybe you come up onto a block. I like to come up onto a little rolled blanket. I don't need as high of a, as a block to fold, but something, it feels nice to have a little bit of lift there. But you can navigate that yourself, find a good place, and you can always come up and out if you realize that's not right. And then we'll fold into our dragonfly. So the knees can bend, it's okay if the feet turn out. Just let the head and neck drop. And every body is different, so however far you feel like your limit is, don't try to push beyond that. Your body knows where to stop. Trust your body. We're turning off the thinking mind 
So we're going into the intelligence of the body. And the intelligence of the body will inform the wisdom of the mind, the innate wisdom. Touching that soft, tender place beyond words. Hard to explain. But it's there and it connects all of us. Sometimes I find this pose really difficult. It's hard to get comfortable. But if you find yourself struggling, you can work with that. Recognize it. And assess how to control it from there. From a calm state of mind, Nothing is urgent. When we practice peace, it translates into our everyday life. And we learn how to deal with the things that we cannot control from a calm state of mind. The asanas here help us learn how to deal with discomfort, to find space and compassion, gentleness, all becomes less personal. start to roll your spine back up and we're just going to transition right back into this butterfly position we're going to start with a bunch of forward folds which will be kind of funky on the lower back so take care of it if you feel any pain but we'll end the class in the reverse so we'll start with these kinds of forward folds and then we'll let the back have more of an expansion. So come back to butterfly. And this time you can put your feet out wide if you want more sensation in the legs. You can like bring your feet further away from you, but if you want more sensation in the groin, you bring the feet closer to the pelvis. Or you can find somewhere in the middle and then you can stack anything to let your head come down. Finding support on a prop or on your feet or on the floor. So 
go. One of the challenges in our daily life that's outside of our control is obviously capitalism, oppression, white supremacy, imperialism, and these are the kinds of things like climate change that just feel so overwhelming and so scary and really hard to fix. Um, so I saw this quote by Howard Zinn and it kind of reminded me of our meditation practice and it connects with how to deal with these circumstances outside of our control. To be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, and kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. I'm gonna say that again. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many where people have behaved magnificently, that gives us the energy to act. And at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents. And to live now as we think human beings should live in defiance of all that is bad around us is itself a marvelous victory. I'll repeat that last paragraph one more time. And if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents. And to live now as we think human beings should live in defiance of all that is bad around us is itself a marvelous victory. When we practice peace, when we practice letting go, we are in defiance of the patriarchy. <laughs> we are defying everything around us that says conflict, war, more, progress. We are allowing ourselves to be. We're not perfect. We're not striving for perfectionism. We're just allowing ourselves to live peacefully. And I would agree with Howard Zinn when he says that that's a marvelous victory. And you can start to walk yourself back up, take your time. Extend your legs out long, feel all the poppy cranky crunches of the body, let everything kind of just creak out, feel all that tension, just kind of creep back in. All the parts of the body that were compressed are now decompressing. And then when you feel ready, just come onto all fours. And from here, we're gonna go into our pigeon. So just bring your right foot, your right leg up first, your left leg back. You want your left and right hip to kind of be in the same level. It's okay if one goes to one side or the other, but you also kind of want to find a good balancing spot. So if you do happen to move to one side or the other, perhaps take a blanket or a block and put it underneath that right hip to keep it stationary. But if they seem pretty even, you don't really have to use a prop. 
And perhaps you come to your elbows or maybe you come onto a bolster or you come all the way down. Pigeon is a great place to practice letting go because there are so many emotions that come up here. So many stories. But you, I bet we could think of at least five stories right off the bat about Pigeon right here. And so just notice these are the things that arise. And you can let them in. Like you're opening the door and letting in these guests. They don't have to stay though. They can just walk right out the back. <laughs> Breathing into the places that feel tight. Softening the edges. Allowing the body to relax. Relax. Enjoying the journey. Find the joy, find the pleasure. There's something about surrendering that can be kind of painful. <coughs> but there's also something about it that's really delightful and it feels really good. <coughs> Life seems to be a lot harder when we resist when we struggle, when we fight ourselves, when we fight others. It's not so fun to do that. It just leaves kind of a bad feeling, a funky taste. But it feels good to feel good. <laughs> it feels good to find joy. To breathe. To allow life to just flow. It's not always going to be fun or pretty. But we might as well just do it because we have to anyway and it's more fun to do it than not. to come up again, come back to all fours. And we'll just go straight into the other side. If you need to take some movements in between, feel free. But if you wanna just get right back into your meditation, you can meditate through the whole process of transitioning over to the left leg. Find your balance the centeredness, even pelvis. Perhaps the side is different, so take that into consideration. It doesn't have to be the same. And drop in, settle down. Relax the doing line. 
okay to take a break. I have one more quote. This one's from Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, my favorite. Um, and I think it relates to what we're talking about. This one is called Irritations and Problems. <laughs> all the things taking place around our world, all the irritations and all the problems are crucial. Without others, we cannot attain enlightenment. In fact, we cannot even tread on the path. If there is no noise outside during our sitting meditation, we cannot develop mindfulness. If we do not have aches and pains in the body, we cannot attain mindfulness. We cannot actually meditate. If everything were lovey-dovey and jellyfish-like, there would be nothing to work with. Feel the struggle of the pain or the discomfort in the body, the tension, the resistance. That's a good thing. Those are the things that wake us up. Those are the things that allow us to practice mindfulness. Without any of that conflict, we wouldn't have any of the good stuff either. A bit of a paradox. Use what we have. We work with what we can. And we let go of the rest. Return back to the tabletop position. Move slowly. Really feel that creakiness. That feeling of coming back into neutral. Come back to a seated position. This time our forward fold is going to be a half dragonfly. So bring your right ankle in towards your pelvis and we'll just keep the left leg out in front. It doesn't have to go over to the side at all. It can just go straight out in front of you. And then we'll just fold over any amount. It doesn't have to be all the way. You don't have to hold on for the foot. I like to put a block right above my knee. Let my head have something to rest on. But if you can hold foot more than that, feel free. Or you could just sit upright with your head bowed. This is how we practice peace. Find the balance. We use what irritates us to wake us up, to remember who we really are. To rejoice in being alive. in the wonder of the cosmos. And then 
beautiful and the beauty of nature. back up, switch sides, fold over the opposite leg. yourself be held by the floor. Anything that feels like it's pulling away from the ground or resisting, try to ease up on it. Skin just kind of mold into the surface of the ground. like water in a bowl. Start to come back up and out. Lean back, push your leg where your legs. Get out all of those little kinks and pops. Any feelings of stickiness? This pose really neutralizes everything. So next, we will take a fish, which will be very nice after all those forward folds. Um, if you don't have blocks, you could use a big, thick blanket underneath your shoulder blades or a pillow. 
something that's just going to prop up the thoracic spine and let your neck hang off of it so that your chest is opening up. Something to go right underneath the shoulder blades and you want it to feel really good. If it doesn't feel really good, try something else because this feels really good. <laughs> If you do have blocks, maybe try putting one underneath your head and one in between your shoulder blades. Or you could create a ramp. Something so that your neck doesn't feel like it's crunching, but your shoulders feel like they're opening. You feel like you can just breathe and rest here for hours. Okay, I do have one more quote, so I'm going to read that one. <laughs> this is another Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche quote. This is from his writings on the path of individual liberation. He says, si se puede. Faith means you can do it. Faith needs a kind of surrendering to oneself. It is not so much thinking that you're going to become a millionaire one day. It is not based on any kind of reward. Instead, faith is knowing that this is the right path. It is based on actual experience. Faith is knowing that this is the right path. It is based on actual experience. And of surrendering to oneself. We are basically good. We are enough. Capitalism tells us otherwise. But we practice peace and we rest in defiance. If you feel really good here and you really want to stay, you can stay. But if you want to change it up slightly, you can take a bolster or a blanket of medium thickness. A bunch of blankets will also do or a big pillow. And get your butt onto it. Get a block and place it upright like a brick and get your feet on top of that and then if you're on a bolster you can let your shoulders come off the top if you don't have props just roll up something and put it under your sacrum and then roll up something and put it underneath your feet and you'll get the same benefits of this inversion you can even put your legs up the wall if you want even more of an inversion, but this one gives you a little bit of um, an extension in the back of your lumbar spine. So just a little bit of prop changing around here. 
but again, you want your foot on something, you want your shoulders relaxed, and your feet can come up onto a block or a blanket. an easy pose to surrender into. It's very restorative. It's really good for the internal organs. It helps the body to regulate. Come back into the parasympathetic nervous system. Clenching the jaw. Maybe let the tongue kind of drape over the teeth. Just feel it glide over and kind of loosen and open up the gum area. It gets weirdly tight in the mouth. Oh, you can still stay laying down, Ellie. That's okay. But if you want to change, actually, we're going to change in like a second. So we'll just move on to the next thing. <laughs> Sorry that that was confusing. But we'll move into a really shortened version of a deer before we end tonight. So come into these pinwheel legs so that both of your knees are bent and your feet can come towards the right. And your knees will point towards the left. Take a bolster or a blanket and place it near your left hip. Turn over the bolster or blanket and come right down onto it. You can turn your head in any direction. Deer pose is connected to the element water. Water, like fluid, the target organ are the kidneys. So you can think about this battery pack, kidneys. It controls so much of how we feel and how we regulate charges our whole system up. And we want it to be watery, we want it to be fluid. We don't want it to be overstressed, which tends to happen to all of us when we live in the grind culture. So this pose is a nice way consciously rest the kidneys to alleviate some of the stress. We get more rest this way than we sleep sometimes. Because we're helping to heal and regulate deep, deep, deep internal tissues, energy, fluid.
Come on up. Switch sides. Stay quiet. Stay focused. Stay light and gentle. And turn over the opposite side. This time we'll be turning towards the right. Give some space in between your knee and your foot if you can in your pinwheel legs. They should be right angles and they're kind of moving away from each other. And then twisting, like really twist over to the right and then drape over that side. Become like water. funny to think of a deer being the element water because they're a little bit clunky and strange. They almost seem kind of rigid. But if you think about the way that they jump, it almost has a wave-like flow to it. It's very fluid. It's very graceful. I like to think about a deer in the snow. Soft tracks. melting beneath their hooves. Delicate. Almost whimsical. It's not like a gushing, rushing fluidity. It's like a delicate trickle. A soothing creep. Come on up and out. Sorry, it was such a short deer. You can always go back to it. We'll do one more restorative pose before Shavasana. Just lay back onto your back. You could put a little cushion underneath your neck if you want some support there. And then just put your heels and toes together and your legs come out wide so you're in this reclined butterfly position now, similar to where we were earlier. But instead of folding forward, we've got this nice little arch. Let the body get heavy. Just descend towards the earth. Turning to your true nature, surrendering to the essence of who we are, love, space, bodhicitta.
you're welcome to stay like this for Shavasana, where you can extend your legs out long in a traditional Shavasana. time to enjoy this moment. This moment is sacred. This moment is sweet. Simply be. Let a tiny smile stretch on your face. Let the simplicity of this gesture echo into your body. A joyful arousal. Roll over to one side. Move your body in any way it's asking for. And join me if you'd like. The mantra of loving kindness. A little prayer for all beings. So we hope that the merits of our practice and the peace that we find in ourselves can bloom and spread and echo into other people's lives, into the lives of those we touch and beyond. May all beings be happy. May all beings be safe. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be at peace. Posing in your own way, finding any gesture or bow. Thank you.